Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today I'm so excited as one of my favorite lenses just got an update and I can't wait to try it with an exciting Alice in Wonderland theme photo shoot. For today, 50 years anniversary, Samyang recently released four new lenses. The very first zoom, the 24-70 f2.8, a long-awaited 135mm f1.8, which is an absolute beast, and an update to the fast primes, the 35mm and the 50mm f1.4. So many people expect that the 85mm f1.4 Mark II will come sooner or later, and today it is here to complete the second generation lineup. If you follow our channel, then you know that 85mm Mark I is a lens that is featured a lot as we got this lens right after it was released in 2019 and it was almost never taken off from my camera until earlier this year the 135mm f1.8 came. That's why I am really excited to see what the new version of my old favorite has to offer. So let's take the red pill and see how deep the rabbit hole goes. What? Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> That's the matrix, you silly. Oh. Now I am here outdoors with Anna. She will help us with the portrait shoot. We're gonna try this new lens from Samyang, the 85mm Mark II. Now, in my experience with the Mark I, I know that this one has a really nice bokeh. That's why the theme of this shoot is gonna be Alice in Wonderland. I'm really <laughs> looking forward to do dreamy, dreamy bokeh that really fit this theme. So let's start shooting. Yay! Before I do my actual portrait shoot, I'm gonna do a warm up shot first to see if my settings are correct and everything's perfect. So let's go. I'm at 1 100, but I'm probably gonna do at 1 200. I also 100 and f1.4, of course. What's the point of shooting like other other aperture if you have 1.4? <laughs> oh my god, the bokeh is so good. But I'm gonna talk about the bokeh later. So that's it. My settings are good. Let's start with the real shit. <laughs> I'm using 85 millimeter focal lens I will have to like literally go a bit back because I want to have the whole scenery included for the picture so this is probably good enough okay I'm shooting So right off the bat, I can already see that it has so gorgeous bokeh. It's literally reminding me when I was really using the 85mm Mark I before because right now I'm so obsessed with 135 that I forgot how amazing an 85mm is. And it just fits the entire dreamy, creamy bokeh it has. And look at her, it's amazing. <laughs> So right now I'm instructing Anna to run towards more cameras, kind of like acting Alice looking for Mr. Rabbit. But for that purpose, we are going to see the eye autofocus on this one. So when I say on three, you just run towards um, just right there. You don't need to be so fast because I don't want you to injure yourself. One, two, three, go. Oh, yes. <laughs> That was so cool. So I did the first one in portrait and now we're going to do in landscape one. And we're going to be doing the same. She's going to run towards me. The first one was really good. The AF is really following her face, which is amazing. I'm just like blown away right now. Mm. 
So with my AF test from just looking with my Ninja V, I've noticed that with Sony A7R3A, is that by the middle of shooting the focus is kind of getting lost but it quickly picked it up so just to make sure we've stopped with sony a7 IV with the latest af system and most of the images were in focus so i'm really happy with it So I've tested this in backlit situation and I've noticed that flaring resistance is not its strength but I am able to use this in my photograph because when I'm against the sun it gives this veil creamy haze although it loses a bit of contrast I'm able to use it with the type of photo I am aiming for today and because the theme is Alice Wonderland I kind of want it to be dreamy creamy bokeh and that flaring just adds to it and i'm so so happy with it so now we wrapped up the portrait shoot which is mainly what this lens is designed for so if you want to follow anna on her social media pages my facebook is stormborn my tiktok is anna drevniok and my instagram is stormborn.portfolio <laughs> 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 Can we stay here for a bit? So my main question with the 85mm Mark II was is it going to be a full redesign like the 50mm or is it going to be just a revamp like the 35mm? And to be honest, I wasn't surprised to see that it's later because just like the 35, the Mark 1 from the 85 was really good already optically. My main problem was with that lens that it's very chunky. So when I'm holding it on a the camera, there's not much space for my sausage fingers between the grip and the lens. And luckily, the 85 Mark 2 is much thinner, so it addressed this problem. But the outside changes don't stop there because this lens received this nice rubberized texture just like most of the second generation lens except the 35 where I'm missing it. And it has the custom switch button so you can change between the focusing and the aperture and also the focus hold button is on. There's a saying, when something is not broken, just don't fix it. And Samyang follows this because the optical design of the Mark II is exactly the same as the Mark I which means there's no aspherical element. Because of this, you have a really smooth and pleasing bokeh. You have the bokeh balls without any onion rings, which is caused by aspherical elements, and the fall off of the bokeh balls are really beautiful. That's why I was a little sad to see that it retained the nine blades from the previous model. So as soon as you start to stop down the lens, you start seeing these uh, polygonal shapes. Another thing is the optical vignetting. The circular shape is only in the middle when it's wide open. And as soon as you go closer to the edges, it turns into those cat eye-like things. Now, obviously, the lack of aspherical elements will come with a little price. And there's a reason why they put those elements in the lenses, mainly to improve the corner sharpness and to combat the purple fringing. So when it comes to this lens, the Mark II 85mm f1.4 from Samyang, why I say it backwards, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so this lens in the center, I'm wide open, it's a little soft, keeps good details, but you can see that there's room to improve. And in the corner, it doesn't fall much behind and there's not really much of chromatic aberrations there, which is a good thing. As you stop down at f2, the center and the corner are both improving and f2.8 is getting really, really good almost peak performance so when you stop it down to f4 there's just a very very slight improvement in both the center and the corners and f5.6 where its peak performance is just amazing f8 diffraction starts to kick in so you start to see a little bit of softening and f11 and especially f16 that's just soft but again it's not a problem with the lens this is just how physics work 
So what about the purple fringing? Unfortunately, that was one of the weakness of the Mark 1 and this lens retains it. You can see a little bit like you can see on this photo we took uh, on Anna's nose. There's a slight amount of purple fringing which can be removed easily. When it comes to axial or longitudinal chromatic aberrations, which is in the blurred out background and foreground, in the background you can see a little bit of uh, cyan green tinting and in the front you can see a little bit of purple fringing but as you can see it's nothing major very well controlled so good job samyang ah oh, boring let's just skip to the fun part where i actually use the lens shall we right now i'm here in my home studio as you can see we will be testing out this lens's sharpness and what better ways to do that than to use Flash. As you can see, I have three lights set up with me. I have this one on my left and one for my hair light at the back. This two is my Godox MS300 and I have one light above my head. So that one is my Godox TT685S. So that doesn't have a model light. That's why I have this one right here just for extra light. Right now, I'm going to do a portrait photo shoot of my son to see this lens's sharpness as I've said and also to see its autofocus performance. I will be using my Atomos Ninja V for that so you guys can see it. So what are we waiting for? Let's start. So now I have my son sat right there. We are now ready to start our shoot. Let's go. I'm so excited. <laughs> Because I'm using an 85 millimeter, I have to actually go all the way back to our living room to be able to shoot like from here. Okay, Tear, please sit down, baby. Okay, let's start. <laughs> Can you like balance it on your head? Let's see how it looks. That's not your happy face. What if someone gives you candy? What do you look usually look like? Is that your happy little face? <laughs> That's not a happy meal face. That's a yeet face. So far, I'm loving the AF of this. It's really spots on on my son's eyes. Just looking through the viewfinder, I can really see that it's sharp. Although I haven't seen it in my computer just yet. I can't wait to actually sit down and edit these photos right now. But for now, I'm going to mount my Atomos Ninja V here to show you guys the AF performance. Let's go. So now I have my Atomos Ninja V mounted on my camera right here. It's pretty heavy in my opinion. And also I just can't find myself a shorter HDMI. So I've got this really long one. <laughs> okay, so let's start. I'm going to shoot and record what my camera see so you guys can see. Let's start. Okay, I'm gonna focus on the floor so you know, you guys can see. It will pick up. Ooh, hello. Hello, cutie pie. Oh, cover your, your, your face with. Oh, where is there? He's gone. And, okay, let me have a look at that. That was a pretty quick one. And you can see, it's sharp. I can see that this lenses is doing pretty well because even though my son is covering his face with the boat or let's see can you cover your face with both your hands both your hands both your hands cover oh peekaboo where is dear oh my god that scared me where is dear is go oh <laughs> that's it that's it and let's have a zoom in on that and that's a mess actually so let's see the next one uh, hmm. borderline smile okay oh that's not a smile so we're gonna zoom in on that that is spot on a sharp right there oh my model is gone oh there he is oh, okay i thought it was gone where did he go and there he is okay stay stay seated now stay seated Stay seated, my lovely. Serious face. Oh, great job. There you go. That is spot my on. Eyes down. My, my ears goes down a little bit yeah? when I do my serious face. 
So you guys can see that this lens performs pretty well, but you can see my son was really like uh, moving so much. This is how usually my photo shoot is with kids. So I need fast lenses <laughs> and <laughs> I know for sure that I can trust this lens right here. Stop it. <laughs> now let's go back to pizza. <laughs> so when it comes to purple fringing, there's one use case scenario where it could cause some issues and that's astrophotography. If you're doing a full color shot, then this purple fringing will ruin your shot because some of the stars will have this uh, bloated uh, purple ring around them. But if you're doing narrow band astro, then because this lens have a good coma and astigmatism as well in the corners, it might be a really good choice for that. So talking about special use case scenarios, there's one thing I should mention and that's infrared. Right now it's on my Sony a7 II, which is modified for full spectrum and I'm using an 860 nanometer filter for maximum infrared effectiveness, yeah. And I have to say that this lens is just amazing for that. It's really good in infrared because there's absolutely no hotspot, maybe a little bit when you stop down to F16, but it's just amazing. So if you want to do infrared portraits, this lens will do the job perfectly. Really good, amazing. So let's talk about the main upgrade for this lens. And when it comes to the Mark I, it was a really good lens for photography, but not so good for videography. And that's been addressed with this lens. Uh, first of all, as I said, it's smaller and a bit lighter as well. So it's much easier to put it on a gimbal, very well balanced. And it's in line with the other second gen lenses. So if you want to swap between the 35, 50 and this 85, it's really easy. You just need a really slight readjustment on the gimbal. And the same applies to color rendition. With the previous generations, it was just all over the place, especially with the 85 having a really worn tone. Now the 35, the 50, the 135 and the 24-70 are quite uniform. But the 85 stands out a little bit because it's a little cold tone, which is the opposite of what the Mark I had, but it's nothing major, nothing that you can't fix in the post process. So when you're changing lenses, you don't need to readjust your white balance. And that's a really good news for videographers. Another big improvement is the autofocus in videography. That was a really weak point for the Mark I. It often lost uh, the subject when you were tracking and it was very jumpy, not in the Mark II. It's really amazing, really keeps the tracking very well. Even in this clip where Tear was technically striking towards me and quite fast, the lens was keeping up, the tracking of the a 4 was keeping up, so it's really worked well together. And as you can see on the background transition, it's not jumpy, it's very nice and smooth. So this is just a perfect hybrid lens for hybrid cameras like the a 7 IV. For photography and videography, it just works. So as you can see, the already great performer 85mm f1.4 just got better. Its compact design and bokeh-oriented image quality makes it perfect for portrait photography. It perfectly fits the second generation lineup and it just fits between 50mm and 135mm focal range, complementing both. <laughs> yeah, I would really welcome all the changes for videographers. It's good to see that Samyang actually listens to its users and fix the issues people had with the Mark I. The new autofocus, especially in videography, and the body redesign makes it a very worthy upgrade, in my opinion. Also, with the new custom switch, I hope sooner or later we will see a firmware update bringing us the linear focusing and non-linear focusing, what we see on the V2 firmware of the 24-70mm f2.8. And if you haven't yet, check out our video about this feature, links in the description. To be honest, when I got to 135mm f1.8, I fell in love with this lens and have not picked up my 85mm, but now with the Mark II, I fell back in love with this focal lens again. While the 85 and 135 as focal lens only have slight differences, 
The images of the two lenses have different character. The 85 mm delivers a slightly more vintage feeling which gives a lot of life to your images and due to the smaller form factor it makes me hesitate less which lens to take the 135 or the 85 mm as now I can easily take both with me and then decide at the shoot which one to use. Yeah, well, 85 mm is not my cup of tea. The impressive infrared capabilities of this lens certainly make it find its way into my bag as well. How bad you don't shoot infrared portraits because that lens is just perfect for it. Hold my lens cap. So that's our first impression of the Samyang 85mm f1.4 Mark II and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss to see how much Alisa sucks at infrared photography. <laughs> Thanks for watching and see you back on our next video. Say that again. <laughs>